I'm an excited user and developer of open source software and today I'm going to tell you a few things about it. I think this topic is very relevant because whenever you buy a computer or a new cell phone, the very existence of open source software affects the price of this product. And whenever you surf the web, then uh, you probably use open source software and if you're already using it, you might want to know what it is. And that's how I start my talk. I start by telling you what open source software is, then I'll tell you a few things on why it's important for society, and then I'll tell you a few things about what you can do to benefit best from open source software. So, start out with what open source software is. It's software that grants you the freedom to use, study, share, and improve the software. What does it mean? Well, software generally exists in two shapes. In, in one shape where you can just use it, and the other shape where you can see how it works internally and, and improve it. And open source gives you the freedom to use the, the form that you already know, the regular form as a user. And there's no possibility for discrimination. Everybody must be allowed to use the software. That means it's, it's not possible to say if you're a woman, you're not allowed to use it, or if you're black, or if you wear glasses. This, this kind of bullshit does not work. Open source allows everybody to use the software and even use it for free. And then it allows to you to study the software. Well, this is nice if you study computer science. Then you can see, this is a cool program. I want to study how it works. I want to learn from it. But why is it is it important for everybody else? Well, we've seen the NSA surveillance scandal recently. And if even if you can't study the program yourself because you're not interested, you don't have the skills, if everybody else can, then, then the chances that there is some something that's uh, undesirable in the software is is a lot smaller. So it's good for you if everybody can study how the software works. The freedom to share is very important for me personally because I like to, to help my neighbor, to help my friends. If they come over, they see my computer, they say, what is it you're running? Uh, how does your movie player work? You can play movies that I can play it. And I can just say, well, I'll, I'll send you a, a copy of the program by mail and it, that's perfectly legal. Or I can say, uh, just download it from there, it's fine. Or, or put the software on USB memory and, and pass them on because I have the legal freedom to share the software with whomever I want. And as I'm a university teacher, I almost totally use open source software because I'm allowed to share it with my students. They can use it for free. And they can also use it for free after the class is over. It's not like a, uh, you can use it for free for three months and you have to pay a shitload of money if you want to use it in a company. This bullshit doesn't work. I'm legally entitled to share it and they are legally entitled to use it for free and that's it. And then everybody is allowed to use, to improve the software. And that's very important because it makes markets possible. And I'll tell you more on that a little later on. And a small analogy to, to how this works. You likely know the online encyclopedia, Wikipedia. Now you may think it's really good or not. I think it's actually the best uh, body of knowledge that mankind has, even though there are some articles which definitely deserve improvement. But what is it that makes Wikipedia so successful? It allows everybody to use it. It allows everybody to, to study how it works internally. It allows everybody to share this knowledge and it allows everybody to improve their articles. And Wikipedia is essentially the, the encyclopedia analogy to what open source is for computer programs. Now, why is open source so Im important for society in general? Because, well, there, there are many, many reasons. I just picked out two of them. One of them are developing countries. Developing countries the people usually don't don't earn the same amount of money that we do and if you only earn say two hundred dollars a month it has a different impact on you if you have to pay say eight hundred dollars on a computer program it's it's straightforward impossible and open source software grants to use for free to those people and it's not like you can use it for free now because you have no money but as soon as your economy starts working you have to pay a lot of money and then you you'll be exploited again. Now you can use it for free now, you can study it, improve it to your own needs, and you can keep on using it when your economy starts working. And this is also important for us in, in, uh, in uh, high-wage countries because when the other countries start working, 
we have new export markets for us. And speaking of markets, that's probably the most important part of open source software. So open source software allows for a free and working software market. It's not like, like a monopoly, because if you have proprietary software, there's only one, one company controlling the product and only one company that can improve it. And let, let me try to explain with a small analogy again. I'm from Austria and we have lots of tunnels. And when you drive through a tunnel, you have to pay money here, at least for the longer tunnels. And how much do they charge you? Do they charge you the cost that, it, that you incur by driving through? No, they, they, they are smarter than that. They say, how much does it cost for you to drive around the mountain? That's a lot of extra mileage for your car, some extra gas and some time wasted. And then they take this price, reduce it by a little bit and that's how much you pay to get through the tunnel. So essentially they, they pay, make you pay the maximum that you're willing to pay. And uh, when you need an improvement in any kind of software, be it a correction of a bug, a feature that's, that's very important to your business, when you need an improvement, you use proprietary software, there's only one company that can do it for you and they will charge you as much as possible. Of course, it, it's in their nature. So say, say you need a feature that costs them 10 hours of work, they can still charge you $20,000 if that's what is worth for you. But if, if you use open source software, then you can hire any company in the world that is able to do computer programming. There's a working market for this service and you get the, the price that's essentially worth what, what uh, you need. And if it's 10 hours of, of professional work, it's probably 10 times $100 uh, or euros and, and you're off with $1,000 instead of 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 or whatever they make up, come up with uh, charging you. So this, this is quite nice. And there are even examples where open source software was able to break up existing monopoly markets. One of them was uh, the Internet Explorer situation. You had Internet Explorer, the web market was stagnating, and then came an open source product, Firefox, and everything changed. Now you have the web being much more capable than before. You have, you have a working market again. You have uh, Chromium, which is open source. You have Firefox, you have Safari, you have Opera, you have Internet Explorer, and, and the web is developing much faster to everybody's benefit again. And now, how can you best benefit from, from the existence of open source software. I tell you, you already do because the computer you're using, even if you don't use open source software on it, it was slightly cheaper because of the open source concurrence forcing the monopoly companies to lower their prices. And the same is true for cell phones, but many cell phones actually run open source software. If you have an Android cell phone, Android is underneath a Linux operating system, which is open source. So every Android cell phone is open source. Or you may use one of the open source web browsers, which are already named Chromium or Firefox. You may use uh, an excellent video player called Videoland Client, and there are many, many, many other programs. But if you don't use them, how, how do you benefit? Or let's say, are you really not using open source? Well, consider for a moment, have you used Wikipedia last week? Or Google, or Facebook? All of these sites are run by open source software because otherwise it wouldn't be able to offer their services for free to you as a customer. So even if you just Google for any search term, you're already using and benefiting from open source. But there are more things you can do to benefit more. If, if you need a new program, well, instead of Googling, I want a new program for free in this area, you can say, if you need image manipulation, you Google open source image manipulation, you get and free and open source high quality product or you google uh, open source office and you get uh, high quality office suits try it out and uh, well to, to close up my talk I started out by defining what open source is and it's basically the four freedoms to use, study, share and improve any open source program and then I told you a few things on why it's important for society in general and how you can benefit best from the existence of open source in general and from using it. And let me close this talk by a few words from Linus Torvalds, the guy who wrote the Linux operating system, which is also open source. He said, software is like sex. It's best when it's free. Thank you.